Our Heavenly Father, Creator of all things, Father, you are holy, righteous, glorious, and almighty. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Shout it out to the mountain tops. Yes, the Lord is good forever. Come on in, come on in, come on in, everybody. Yes, the Lord is good forever, forever and ever and ever. I welcome you all. I thank you that are on here now and will be listening later. Welcome, it's such a pleasure, such a pleasure to be here, to be here. We're taking off right now with Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, we are moving right along, right along. I want to read you a little message here from the voice, from the voice, what it says before we get into the reading of Romans chapter 2. This is what the voice says about Romans chapter 2. It says, Paul sounds a sober warning. God's wrath is here. It is not some far off future event. Paul says that God's wrath is already at work in the world. And what is effectively God's hands off policy? God, he says, steps aside and gives us over to idolatry, 
sexual sins and depraved minds, human sin and depravity, depravity are both its cause and effect. You see, we are not only punished for our sins, but we are punished by our sins. If God's salvation consists essentially of his presence with us, then his wrath consists of his absence or separation from us. The bad news is this. God's wrath is real. Without the good news of Jesus, no hope exists. This ties in with verse uh, Romans chapter 1 where we read a lot about all of these things. Idolatry, um, uh, fornication, and all of these things that are not permitted. But this is the beginning of of Romans chapter 2 in the voice before it goes into the reading of verse 1. We are going to jump over now to the KJV. And I am going to begin reading Romans chapter 2. I hope you have your Bibles open. And if you don't, go ahead and sit back and listen. Listen up. And I encourage you to download the show. Download all the shows We know this is internet radio and sometimes things don't always stay on forever. There are times when some of the podcasts will be um, taken off the main portal and taken over to the archive. So if you have it downloaded on your site, then you'll have it forever and you'll be able to listen to it on your favorite device. Verse 1, Romans chapter 2. Starts off saying, Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges does, do, doest the same things. Let's go over here to the voice. And let's read this verse 1 here and see for more clarity. It says, So you can see there are no excuses for any of us. If your eyes shift their focus from yourselves to others to judge how they are doing, you have already condemned yourselves. You don't realize that you are pointing your fingers at others for the exact Things you do as well. Wow. So you're pointing your fingers at others for the exact things that you do as well. So the voice just clarifies it a little better than the KJV. Verse 2, KJV. But we are sure that the judgment of God is is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinketh thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? You see, you're doing the same thing, but you're judging someone else, is what it's saying. So, That person that's doing the judging and doing the same thing is not going to escape the judgment of God. Verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impotent heart, Treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patience, patient continence, and well doing seek for glory and honor and immorality eternal life. 
But unto them that are conscientious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the, the, the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. Verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. And art confident that that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teaches another, teachest thou not thyself? That thou preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? So you teach one, have you not taught yourself? And you preach not to steal, but don't you still? See what the scripture is saying here. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? You see, are you doing all these things? You're saying these things, but you're doing them yourselves. That's what the writings of, of Paul is saying here. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth profiteth if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made uncircumcision therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who, by the letter and circumcision, does transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. 
But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. You see, it's saying you can be a Jew, you can be a Jew, but are you that Jew? You can be a Jew outwardly and in all, but are you that inwardly? You could have your circumcision, but is it, is it from the heart and the spirit? So it's just as if one is not circumcised. Now, let me read this going on here to Romans 3 right here. Because I believe here Romans 3 with the voice describes what we just read. It says, when God's people are people who claim to be God's people are hypocrites, then God is the one who gets the bad name. How often do we say one thing and do another? How often have we set a standard for others only to break it ourselves? The saying is true. We practice every day what we believe. All the rest is religious talk. There's a lot of religious talk out there. A lot lot of smudginess and self-satisfaction. But everyday people readily violate their consciences and the Lord's reasonable teachings. For faith to matter, it has to get under your skin. And that does sum up Romans chapter 2. You know, we just can't be sayers of the word. We have to be doers as well, as well. You know, um, verse 3 here in the voice says, here's what is happening. You attack and criticize others and then turn around to commit the same offense yourselves. Do you think your will somehow dodge God's judgment? Verse 4 here says, do you take the kindness of God for granted? Do you see his patience and tolerance as signs that he is a pushover when it comes to sin? How could you not know that his kindness is guiding our hearts to turn away from distractions and habitual sin to walk a new path? You know, so we have to be careful. Not just saying, but doing. People are watching us in our everyday lives. People that we don't even know. Online, they're looking at your social media. They're looking at what you post. They're listening to what you say. And it's, it's, it's sometimes you can go on a, a, a lot of pages a lot of pages. I, I get a lot of um, um, uh, friend requests. And it says, oh, I'm a true worshiper of God and this and that. But when you go down their page, it's all kind of obscenities. Cursing and videos are not right. And, and all of that. Facebook. Um, um, Instagram. TikTok, a lot from TikTok saying they're this person and that person of God and follower of the Lord. And when you go on to TikTok and look at the videos that's going on and look at what they're saying and some of the videos, they're speaking about God, they're speaking. But in, in the same video, they're saying curse words. Curse words are just flying. But they're putting God's name in as well. 
So these things, God is not going to allow. He's not allowing. He's not accepting. You know, this is what you say you are on the surface. But when you dig deeper, if this is you, I'm not talking to everyone. But when you dig deeper, then it's it's really seeing who you really are. See, people are watching. You know, if you're not going to walk the walk of the Lord, don't talk the talk. Because it's either or. You can't be lukewarm. You can't be half over here cursing and and, and getting drunk and and getting drugged up, and talking about God. At the same time, you're over here talking about God, and then you're mixing it together. And then you got videos that you're dancing, and you're doing all kind of seductive dancing. But now you're talking about God in one video, and all down, or you're posting someone else's videos, and it's just seduction, and just cursing and everything. As well. So. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. And everybody says that they are. Of the Lord. That that they are. What are their actions? People are watching. People are watching us. So. We want to live from within. We want to live within our spirit. We're spirit-led, spirit of the Lord, your heart, your love. You know, we, we, we have to just be careful out here and stay prayed up. And, and when things happen, we pray to God, we repent. You know, and all is forgiven through the blood of Jesus, but it's not something that we're doing over and over and over again on purpose. You know. But sometimes the flesh is going to slip. You may end up doing, saying something or something. We, you must be careful and you must stay prayed up. And don't get out here and and and, and get tied up into fornication the adultery and all of that. I know um, when growing up and everything, and and um, it was suggested that my mom said that she was growing up, you had to have chaperones. They had chaperones. And um, she was studying with the witnesses, and they advised chaperones. No, I don't go along with all everything and all that. But she, they, they suggested chaperones. Even though it was the same religion and everything, the flesh is weak. You know, so, we, you know, you got to be careful out here. And there are Christians, you know, looking for a mate and things like that. Let God bring that mate to you. Pray to the Lord. Let God bring that mate to you. And anyone can say, yes, I was baptized. I've been baptized from a little child. You know, yes, yes, yes. I go to church. I I worship. But then what are their actions? And there's one that was listening to um, a service yesterday. Not yesterday, but Sunday. And um, there's a Christian woman that that says, you know, she's in the dating scene. She's dating. You know, and she's dating Christian men. So they say they're Christian. She said, but what she's having a hard time finding is that in dating, she says she dates for a long while. You know, he's a gentleman. Everything is good. But every man that she's dated for a long while, he has no problem going to bed and sleeping with her. So really, 
what's really going on right there. So she doesn't tolerate that. You know, if the man is not, well, no, we need to wait for marriage. We need to wait. But if he's in agreement to go to bed and sleep with her, if she's willing, then no. Or she's just putting the question out there. But they would be willing instead of saying, no, we're going to wait. We've been together this long. We're going to wait. The Bible says this, this, that. Let's be strong. We are not to commit fornication. You know, so, you know, it's kind of good. You know, I can, I can see what a chaperone is is needed or, you know, um, and also go out in groups. You know, go, you know, back, back in, you know, my mother would say, you know, go out in groups. So you're with, with a group, you may go skating, you may go whatever to dinner. Go out with groups. To keep yourself, you're still going out. But that group is is basically kind of like chaperones. You know, because you're not going to do certain things in front of a group. But you're still out with that person. You're still dating. You still had a good time. You, you went out, you know, and everything is still positive. So, just be careful. I just wanted to throw couple things out here that, you know, people are watching. We got to be, we got to be careful. We got to, if it, if it's in us to walk that way, we're going to walk that way. So, just wanted to throw that out there. And I really appreciate you all um, being here. I really appreciate everything. I thank you for um, your listening contribution and um, the podcast it, it is spread basically practically been I can't think of a, a country that the podcast has not been in all over the world and I just want to thank you for your um, listening contribution sharing the word spreading the word download the shows make sure you download And come on back, come on back, come on back. So, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we humbly come to you, Father. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for being right here in the midst. For us learning. For us growing. For, Father God, your word is bond. Your word, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your spirit. Father God, if anyone is going through anything, Father God, touch them, touch their heart. Where there's there's darkness, Father God, may there be light. May they begin to heal if anyone is experiencing any pain, any sickness, any disease. We know that it's nothing that you cannot cure. Your son walked this earth and cured so many people of all diseases, all sicknesses. Father, we know that you are a healer. We honor you, Father, and we thank you, Father, for your grace, for your love, for your glory, for your son, For your Holy Spirit, Father God, thank you for your angels who take care and look out, do your will. Thank you, Father, for your blessings. Thank you again for your love and your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I just want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you for being here. Tune on in and read up Romans chapter 3. We'll be going over next Romans chapter 3. As we see how Paul is being used mightily. And the good things that Paul is doing. And the letters right now that he is writing. And writing to the Romans. And so forth. 
Take care. Take care, everyone. And stay safe. Stay safe.